Good morning to all of you. Greetings to everyone, and uh, I'm happy that you can join us in the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. And so we begin the celebration of the Holy Eucharist as we always do in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And so today we celebrate the memorial of San Lorenzo Ruiz, the first Filipino saint. And we truly, we ask for his intercession as we continue to experience this crisis. We hear of so many people <clears throat> getting infected with the virus. At the same time, many people are dying. And these people are, are very familiar to us. So it really pains us and it hurts us. So we ask San Lorenzo Ruiz to pray to the Father, to Jesus, that somehow healing may be experienced by our people and, of course, the rest of the world. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we pause for a moment, call to mind our sinfulness, our weaknesses before a loving and merciful Father. And so with contrite hearts, we all say, I confess, O Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord of mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And so we pray. Grant us, we pray, Lord God, the same perseverance shown by your martyrs, St. Lawrence Ruiz and his companions, in serving you and their neighbor, since those persecuted for the sake of righteousness are blessed in your kingdom. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord of hosts, there shall yet come peoples, the inhabitants of many cities, and the inhabitants of one city shall approach those of another and say, Come, let us go to implore the favor of the Lord, and I too will go to seek the Lord. Many peoples and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to implore the favor of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, In those days, ten men of every nationality speaking different tongues 
shall take hold. Yes, take hold of every Jew by the edge of his garment and say, Let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Responsorial Psalm, let our response is, God is with us. God, God is, is with, with us. His foundation upon the holy mountains, the Lord loves. The gates of Zion, more than any dwelling of Jacob, glorious things are said of you, O city of God. God, God is, is with, with us. us. I tell of Egypt and Babylon, among those that know the Lord, of Philistia, Tyre, Ethiopia, this man was born there. And of Zion they shall say, One and all were born in her, and he who was established her is the Most High Lord. God, God is, is with, with us. us. They shall note, when the peoples are enrolled, this man was born there, and all shall sing in their festive dance, My home is within you. God, God is, is with us. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Son of Man came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days for Jesus to be taken up were fulfilled, he resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way, they entered a Samaritan village to prepare for his reception there, but they would not welcome him because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they journeyed to another village. My friends, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel passage presents Jesus as resolute to proceed to Jerusalem where he will undergo his paschal mystery thereby fulfilling his mission. This envisioned to bring about the reconciliation of sinful humanity to his Father. Since Jesus and his disciples are starting from Galilee, heading toward Jerusalem means that he needs to pass through Samaritan territory. Unfortunately, he was not well received. Why is this so? What is the connection between the destination of Jerusalem and the Samaritans' refusal of hospitality to Jesus. According to Father Ham, a Jesuit, the source of Samaritan hostility may be attributed to the conversation of Jesus with the Samaritan woman in the Gospel of John. The quarrel between Samaritans and Jews regarding the proper place to worship God, Mount Gerizim for Samaritans, but Jerusalem for Jews, was already centuries old by the time of Jesus. So for Samaritans, a group of Galilean Jews heading for Jerusalem to celebrate Passover was a group of Israelite heretics practicing their heresy and therefore not to be encouraged with Samaritan hospitality. Understandably, this breach of Middle Eastern hospitality of feeding the traveling stranger was offensive to James and John, who were moved to some feelings of reciprocal hostility. That's why they said, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Jesus, however, will not go along with this reaction to the Samaritan rejection. As Luke reports, Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they journeyed to another village. What a great example of Jesus modeling his own teaching about responding nonviolently to hostile rejection. He pays attention to the source of the Samaritan behavior. He realized that these are fellow Israelites who are doing their best to be faithful to their tradition about the proper way to worship God. He knows where the Samaritans are coming from. That enables him to stay cool and refuse to escalate the hostility by finding a non-hostile way of responding. 
exactly as he has taught in the Sermon on the Mount. This episode in the life of our Lord challenges us whenever we experience rejection and trials. Though our natural tendency is to behave like the disciples who wanted to retaliate with a lack of warmth in receiving them, the way of Jesus is nonviolent. We are not to act aggressively, but really take into consideration the reason why others behave in such a rude manner. Is it their previous experience of rejection and their own woundedness? In doing so, the cycle of violence is put into, into a halt. It is a way of bridging relationships and not creating enemies whom we would hate and despise. Meanwhile, we celebrate today the memorial of San Lorenzo Ruiz and companions. Have we ever wondered that after 500 years of Christianity, which we celebrate this year, there are only two Filipino saints, martyrs at that, in the persons of San Lorenzo Ruiz and San Pedro Colunzod? Why is it that other countries where Christians are a minority have more saints, like that of Vietnam and Korea, having at least 100 saints? How about other countries with the largest Christian population in the world, like the USA, Brazil, Mexico, Russia? A little research reveals that these definitely have more saints and blessed. Lorenzo, as a lay person, serves as a model for the lay faithful to take a more active role in ensuring that the precious gift of faith, especially in the celebration of 500 years of Christianity, may flourish. With the irreversible declining ratio of clergy to lay, the potential of lay people to complement the clergy and religious in propagating the Catholic Christian faith is surely to be tapped. You are also gifted that our collaboration may truly strengthen and unify our community even more. It is not fair to say that the lay are being considered only now because there is a dwindling number of priests and religious. The more accurate reason is that the clergy acknowledges the unique talents and expertise of the lay that can complement ours to share the good news of Jesus. Your responsibility to be proclaimers of Jesus was realized in baptism when you are told to participate in the prophetic, kingly, and priestly ministry of Christ. Can we imagine our community without your generous and enthusiastic self-offering in our liturgies as well as the various charitable projects of the church? You bring an excitement and dynamism that can never be realized if only the clergy and a handful of lay volunteers will work hand in hand in the community. Today then, it's an invitation for all of you to accept your crucial role with Lorenzo Ruiz as our inspiration. You might not literally end up like Lorenzo, a martyr, but in serving our community with willing hearts, our self-denial and dying will happen as seen in the trials and crisis. These will be hurting and may probably raise questions and doubts why we would still choose to get involved more in the ministry of the church. Our being followers of Jesus has to go beyond fulfilling our Sunday obligations. What can you generously and joyfully share to strengthen the church, all geared to be of service to others, especially the neglected, the poor, and those considered as nobodies in our society? San Lorenzo Ruiz and companions, pray, pray for, for us. us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz is the proto-martyr of the Philippines and the first Filipino saint. Let us pray to the Lord that through the prayers of Saint Lorenzo Ruiz and his companions, we may overcome all life's trials and eventually increase our hope and love. For every petition, we say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz was a family man. May he intercede for our families and keep family members united in love, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. May the Lord bless church workers and catechists, migrants and missionaries, that like St. Lorenzo Ruiz, they may share and give witness to the faith in Christ, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Following the example of St. Lorenzo Ruiz, may we offer to God our life, and even if we have a thousand lives, we may still offer them to him, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. 
May St. Lorenzo Ruiz, who died in a foreign country, take care of Filipinos living and working in this country and in other parts of the world, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. May Filipinos who have left their country in search of a better future may become leavens of faith to communities to which they belong, sharing their culture and spiritual wealth, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our communal intentions. We pray for those celebrating their birthdays, especially Carla Abau, Rusella Pinpin, Tony Valdez, Thelma Roman, Chai Maligali, Maritel Nievera, Nora Eleanor de la Cruz, Father James Gascon of the Society of Jesus, Terence Ang, Domeng Serrano, Charito Nanyagas, Kathleen Gatdula, and Nikki Carsi Cruz, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer for the healing of Rosario and Antonio Lu and family, Mary Tan, Ramon Felia Jr., Ricky and Mimi, Mimai Savior, Erlinda Lim, Ibu Lukminto, and Tess Gatan, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer for the repose of the souls of Emperatrice Pat Gaston, Rembrandt Santos, David Daza, Crisanta Mayoralgo Villanueva, Jose Viado, Butch Samson, Adelaida Marfori Lombos, Victor Venida, and Eustachia Padillo, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And for the special intentions of Bodget and Eden Rabena on their 25th wedding anniversary, Rio Carla Pineda, Bevil Lynn Santillan, Carmen Dael, Raquel Nakayama, Charlton and Charina Kulanag on their 25th wedding anniversary, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions you have sent to our Facebook pages at Jescom and Radio Katipunan, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God our Father, through the intercession of St. Lorenzo Ruiz and companions, enable us by your Holy Spirit to live and die for you and your beloved people. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. As the Lord the Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And so pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for a good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, Holy Father, the offerings we bring in commemoration of the holy martyrs, Lorenzo, and companions, and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyrs, Lorenzo and companions, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Honesto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that through the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints and martyrs, especially Lorenzo and companions, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us a very beautiful prayer, and now we have the courage to all say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's share this peace. Peace be with you. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. And so, my beloved friends, behold Jesus, whom Lorenzo deeply loved. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. The body and blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. And so we pray, O God, who in your holy martyrs, Lorenzo and companions, have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that drawing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for, for us. The Lord is with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you and your loved ones. 
the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, the Mass is ended. Go in the peace and joy of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God.